If the Bible is not a reliable source, what's the proof that the Qur'an is reliable and the Qur'an is based on the Bible? Okay, the Qur'an is not based on the Bible at all. Uh, the Qur'an addresses the prophetic tradition. The Qur'an addresses, if you will, the biblical tradition. The Bible, which is a book that we respect, and we must be very polite when we speak about it. And I hope that nothing that I said tonight uh, was not that way. But the Bible represents an extremely small portion of the prophetic legacy. And um, if, for example, we were to talk about Islam as just the Qur'an, without hadith, you know, without tafsir, without the knowledge of the Arabic language and so forth, that would be somewhat like speaking of Judaism and Christianity simply in biblical terms. The prophetic legacy that was given to the children of Israel was huge. And um, it includes things which are biblical and extra-biblical. And in the history of the Bible, and the best studies of the Bible have been done by Jews and Christians themselves, in the best studies of the Bible, you always have um, a vast amount of material that is outside the biblical tradition. And um, um, when the Qur'an speaks to the children of Israel, it often says things that you'll never find in the Bible. You know, for example, in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, the first address that Allah gives to the Jews is about what? The story of Adam, the creation of Adam. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا And then he tells us about the angels being commanded to prostrate themselves to Adam. Did you ever find that story in the Bible? In the Bible, God taught Adam the names of all things. But that's about it. And yet, among the children of Israel, and among the rabbinical Jews to this day, the most important belief, and the first belief, is the belief about what they call Adam Kadmun, which is Adam in the Jannah. Adam before this world. And the rabbis have the whole story. They have the story with as much detail as we have it about how God created Adam, how he taught Adam the names of all things, how he enjoined the angels to prostrate themselves to Adam, how, some, how, how Satan did not prostrate himself. You know, this is a fundamental prophetic belief in the children of Israel. And yet you won't find it in the Bible. But you will find it in other sources. Um, you know, وَمَا uh, قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ So God says of uh, the children of Israel that they did not kill the Messiah and they did not crucify the Messiah but it was made so to appear to them. And where did you find that in the Bible? If you, find, if you look at the New Testament that the Copts have today, or that the Orthodox have, or the Catholics or the Protestants, all of those are crucifixion texts. All of those are predicated on the belief that Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and was resurrected from the dead. Even though their texts are very interesting to work with, because they're not conclusive especially the Gospels, okay? But when we go to the greater tradition, which is not there in the Bible, then we find that in early Christianity, in the first century and the second century, most Christians were docetics. D-O-C-E-T-I-C, -E docetics, which is from the Greek word dokein. And dokein in Greek means shubbiha. They believed that Jesus Christ was not crucified. And they believed that someone else was crucified in his place and that the person crucified in his place was made to look like him. 
This was a very common belief in the first and second centuries of Christianity. And um, after later on, when the crucifixion Christianity dominates, it will wipe that out. It will clean the slate. This is the history of Judaism and Christianity. That Judaism and Christianity are never tolerant of differences in their own ranks. Muslims are historically an amazingly tolerant people. That we have differences of opinion, we have sectarian divisions, but we don't usually wipe the slate clear. That if you want to know what this particular group like the Khawarij believe, you know, you can find it very well spelled out. Okay? This is the way our history is. In Christianity, it's not that way. In Christianity, when one particular interpretation wins the day, it will wipe the slate clean to the extent that it's able to do it, and the Jews are the same way. The Jews of today are the descendants of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a particular sect of Jews in the days of Jesus Christ. And the Pharisees, in, in traditional Pharisaic belief, it is kufr to look into the books, to open the books of a non-Pharisee. So you have others, you have Essenes, you have uh, Sadukis, Sadducees, and other, you're not allowed to read their books. In Egypt you have one of the greatest, one of the most interesting Hebrews of all, who was Philo of Alexandria. Philo of Alexandria. This is a really amazing person. And his theology uh, is not Pharisaic at all. It is probably Sadducee. It is Saduki. The Jews damned Philo. And you're not allowed to read Philo. The Christians preserved Philo because of the fact that they could use his interpretation for their own theology. Okay, so this is something to know. Now, in the history of Christianity, we have also the non-canonical scriptures, which are quite extensive. Okay? And in the non-canonical scriptures, you'll find, if you look at what are called the Acts of the Apostles, in the Bible today, we have one book that is called Acts, which is a really interesting book. Okay, but you have many acts of the disciples of Christ that are not in the Bible. Every one of those is docetic, except for one. Every one of them is docetic. In the Acts of John, for example, it says that John, who was very close to Jesus, he went up on the Mount of Olives, and he was there, and he was looking at the crucifixion, and he was weeping. And then Jesus came to him to console him. And he said that I am the Messiah, and the one crucified was not me, and so forth. So, you know, this is, so the, the Qur'an, and I think this is really important, that the Qur'an addresses Bani Israel, and it tells them about all of the things that they disagreed on. And the things that they disagreed on are the foundations of Pharisaic Judaism, uh, Trinitarian Christianity, and everything else. So the Qur'an is really amazing. May Allah enable us to get knowledge and to use that knowledge well, bi ta'ala. But we know that the Qur'an is authentic because of the way that it has been transmitted to us. And the Qur'an was very carefully transmitted. We have uh, the recitations of it. Uh, we have uh, the different manuscripts of it. And um, as a rule, you know, uh, even honest non-Muslims who are historically honest, you know, they will acknowledge that this book is the book that was given to the Prophet Muhammad or the book that he taught. So these are historical things that are based on the study of evidence. The Bible, again, you know, we respect the Bible. And, and the Bible is not easy to talk about. You know, the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew Bible was never pointed you know, so for example, you know, in the Qur'an, as you know, you have a point under the back. You have, um, you know, a kasra under the back. You know, you, you know that the scene is sakina. Okay, the Bible was never pointed. 
And the Bible was written as letters, written together with no separation. You just have nothing but letters, no chapter, no verse. And the Gospels were written that way too. Even the Greek Gospels, they were written as Greek letters together with no punctuation, no division. So how do you read it? Where does the word begin? Where does the word end? And that's why also among the Jews are those who يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Among the Jews there were those who recite the book the way that it should truthfully be recited. And they had that by إِذِن They had that by ijaza. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, one of the things that the Dead Sea Scrolls community insists upon is that they have حَقُّ tilawa, That they have imams who know how to recite the Bible. So the way that the Bible is written in Hebrew today, you know, which is pointed and you have different verses, this is not older than um, 800 years. This is a rabbinic recitation that goes back to the Middle Ages. And this is why even when we talk about what the Bible is saying, you have to be very careful. Because uh, in reality, to be able to make any statement about it, you need to be able to look at the original Hebrew text. Okay, um, and, and then you see maybe the words are different. Maybe it has a completely different meaning. But um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls community, the Dead Sea Scrolls community believed that the Bible that was given to Moses was much vaster than the Bible that exists today. Uh, the Psalm of Dave, Psalms of David in the Bible today are 150 psalms. And the Dead Sea Scrolls community says that they were more than 4,000. That David, who was a prophet, they say that explicitly, was given over 4,000 psalms. So that means that the 150, 50% of which historians disagree about, that they represent only a small percentage of what was there. This is part of the wisdom of God sending prophets. And our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, comes into history with a strong community behind him, a victorious community, and then his message is carefully transmitted and carefully preserved. And we don't say that out of irrationality or out of fanaticism. It's a historical fact. And it is one of the wisdoms of God in creation. Um, 